Yo, Elliot, I've heard you discuss the concept of the dark mother and have also heard Jesse Lee Peterson speak about it. My mom did this so intensely when I was growing up because I'm an only child and my dad worked all over the world. I now work with my family, including my mom in my refill shop and still see the effects on my character, my manhood, self-esteem and thoughts every single day. It's been very difficult to deal with, and it's the weirdest demonic thing. My mom resents my wife and almost resents her grandchildren and subconsciously sabotages everything we do. Any advice on dealing with this jumbled up mess of a situation would be very helpful. Thanks. So the concept of the dark mother is not even a new one. It's something that's worn against in the Bible, in tradition in wisdom literature and mythology from the dawn of creation. If you read Iron John, the book Iron John, he goes into many of the different mythologies that, so, that are uh, surround the, the conspiracy of the mother against the son. And it's, us, and it's often done in conjunction with the world. By the way, I, this is sort of a side, we're reading in... Genesis right now with my children. You guys know that I'm doing Bible study with my kids every Tuesday and Thursday. We go through different chapters right now. We, we, uh, we read the chapter on the birth of Isaac. I'm, I'm sorry, Isaac's children, uh, Esau and Jacob, Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau were two sons that were completely different that both came out the same woman. Esau was akin to his father and his father favored him because he was a hunter. He liked to be out. He liked to chase animals, shoot them down or whatever, you know, prepare them. He was a man's man. So he, he, he spent more time with his dad. Jacob, on the other hand, who ends up being very clever, very sneaky and steals in many ways, depending on how you look at it, steals the blessing from Esau. He's more favored by his mother. He spends more time in the tent. He spends more time around the women and thus has a bit more of a cunning uh, seductive sort of manipulative power to him where Esau was more like a man was more upfront, more bold. He was stronger. He just did what he had to do. Jacob was sneaky because mommy was in his ear. And so this conspiracy that I was talking about as his, as his presence in the book, Iron John is a conspiracy of the mother with society. Notice he, was, he spent time amongst the, the tents, the tents. There's a conspiracy that the mother and society, civilization, bond in against the son. And so in the story, you, in, in Iron John, he talks about it in terms of the mother and the school teacher. The school teacher represents the cultivation of the world. Jacob hung out with his mom and lived in the conspiracy, in the conspiratorial uh, stew of his mommy and the tents, the, the tent dwellers, right? And, it, and, and in many ways destroys the son. Now you talk about the dark mother. I'm not saying that Rebecca was a dark mother, but this tendency to want to usurp a boy's masculinity in order to maintain control over him, particularly in a uh, situation where there's an absence of a father. And so you're sort of living this out. The dark mother wants to control the boy to the very end. And like you says, she will even resent the wife. She will resent the grandchildren. She will do all she can to destroy. She's a destroyer. The dark mother is a destroyer. Now, I know you've heard me say that describe this concept. There's so much more that we can, so much deeper it can go. And of course, reading the book Iron John would be a good place to begin. But Jesse Lee talks about this quite a bit when he says that we are to return to our fathers. But before we return to our fathers, we must forgive our mothers. And so I've sort of like digested that concept over time for a while because, of course, you know, my own life, but then, you know, mentoring to young men. And what I come to, this is just my opinion, but you'll see how it, you know, comes about forgiving the mother is all about removing emotional content from her. Any emotional attachment you have to the mother must be cut off. It's funny because also in the book, Iron John, which is a book about men and initiation, he talks about how the Navajo Indians, I think it was the Navajo, the Navajo Indians were known for having the most manly of men, the most 
fierce of warriors. And they had an initiation process by which when a boy turned a certain age, he would be separated from the tribe and go through his initiation process. But when he returned, he was no longer allowed to talk to his mother. And there's great wisdom behind that. When he was a boy, it's okay, you can talk to your mom. Once initiated into manhood, the only way he could correspond with his mother was through his sisters or, or some, other, some other person. So instead of mommy coming to him and, and uh, requesting something or asking something, mommy would say to his sister or to the husband, can you tell Johnny so-and-so? And Johnny vice versa. There was no more any communication verbal between the mother and the, father, and, and the son because in order for that boy to be, and they were known for being very virile men, very upfront with women, very you know, strong sexual prowess. In order for him to stand in a type of strong masculine sexual warrior that he is, he has to have, he has have had to severed all mommy boy attachments. We live in a gynocentric world which is much more likened unto a matriarchy than a patriarchy because it's all mommy-centered. And the rulers of this world know that when you get mommy, you get everybody. And so the, the women spend more money than men. So all, most marketing, most propaganda is geared towards empowering women. The whole world is geared towards empowering women. For a number of reasons, one of which is they spend more money. So the advertisers know that. So you want to feed their ego. But anyway. But when we were patriarchal, when men were men and women were women, they understood that initiation had to happen and a separation from the mother was imminent, critical for that boy to become a man. That's an extreme example. But you can see we live in extreme example, too. You, you're a grown man with a wife and child and your mommy you see your mommy every day. Your mommy still gives you her opinion. She's, her mood is affecting your life. You need to separate from your mom. That's really what it is. It, it doesn't, listen, the for, let me back up for a moment. The forgiveness is about separation. When Jesse Lee says, forgive your mother, in essence, he's saying, you gotta, you gotta cut yourself off from her. Cut yourself off from your mother. Every boy has to, at some point, cut himself off from his mother. And if not, it, the relationship will grow perverted. It's better for the mother and for the boy that the emotional content is removed because the boy will not grow up and the mother will hold on as long as she can. And it's not about women being bad in this way. It's, that's why it's called the dark mother. What's dark? Hidden. It's the hidden darkness, the hidden inclination within the mother. Men and women both have dark, hidden inclinations. There's an inclination within the mother to usurp, to smother the boy. I even see it with my wife. We were talking about it today, right, with regard to my son. And my son is a lot like a mama's boy. You know, very different. I couldn't wait to get away from my mom. But I was, I guess I was still a mama's boy when I was his age. But he's got it bad. And his mom uh, uh, um, does it with him. You know, they're, they're, they're just very mommy and boy loving. Nothing wrong with that, but she also knows and she even says to me, she says, she says, oh, my heart aches when I know that he's going to grow up one day. And I'm like, yes, he's going to grow up one, one day. And she knows you can't get in the way. You can't allow your emotions to tether him in. Because what does a boy do? And I, I watched it with my son, too. He doesn't want to upset mommy. No boy wants to upset mommy. But at some point, nature calls you to upset her. Even in the book, um, The Fisher King. When we talk about Parsifal, Parsifal lives with only his mom in the tent. One day he sees the warrior drive, ride by on the horse and he says, oh, mommy in the tent, warrior on the horse. Mommy in the tent, warrior on the horse. Warrior on the horse. And he says, mom, I got to go. All he knows is his mom. You know what happens after he leaves his mom to get on the horse and follow the warrior? His mom dies. His mom dies. She dies. In a way, you got to let your mom die. Metaphorically, but in your heart, you got to let your mom die. I love my mom. My mom's here, actually. My, both my parents are here. I love both my parents. But my allegiance, my attachment, my, the emotional content of my life does not, is not predicated on or, or revolves around my mother's. My mom could have a bad mood. She could have a bad attitude. She could not like something, but it don't matter. 
No matter. Oh, my mom doesn't like something. So what? And my mom is a mature woman. She understands it's not my place to tell. If she didn't like my wife, she might tell me once, but, well, I don't know. Maybe she would have nagged me, but she loves my wife, so I don't know. But anyway, uh, <laughs> my point is that you got to kick your mom out. She shouldn't be a part of your business. That's, that's, that's just one practical step that I would make is get her out of your business. Why is she in your shop? So I now work with my family, including my mom. Don't work with your mom. You need to get away from your mom, far away, physically separated from her. Metaphysically first through the, through the, um, through the uh, forgiveness. He says, I haven't figured out how to separate from her. It has to happen on a metaphysical level first. Metaphysical meaning emotional, mental, spiritual. That means you need to no longer be concerned with what your mom thinks or says. Very important. Otherwise, for the rest of your life, you're going to be ball and chain to the dark mother. She keeps her you ball, ball and chained by her opinion, by her moods, by her feelings, by her, you see, the minute her moods, her feelings, her opinions don't really matter. And when I say don't matter, I don't mean you're angry about. I don't mean you have resentment towards. I don't mean that you're pushing her away and hating her because that's just as bad. It's, it's two ends of the same spectrum. It's just as bad. Two, two sides of the same coin. To hate your mother and to be overly attached to your mother, they're both the same. It's the emotional content. You need to be completely stoic about your mother. You know, I have no opinion. She's my mom. I love her, but I have no opinion. Have no opinion, have no feelings. You're, uh, as far as your work is concerned, I see that you wrote a comment here. It says, I haven't figured out how to separate from her considering that we're running a business. And even if I got a trade job an hour away, my mom would still try to destroy and control my, through my wife, right? So do I just uproot, move, and throw my family into struggle? Well, I don't know about the second part struggle throwing your family into struggle but you know what struggle requires struggle equals growth we know that because we lift right he says do i just uproot and move away well yeah you got to get away from her you got to do whatever you can to get your whole family away from her she's a toxic individual colleen's mom is a toxic individual we try to maintain as much distance as possible from her Though she's been doing most of it herself. That's, how, that's, that's really how the toxicity has unfolded because she doesn't want to be around us because we're not, we haven't taken the medicine, right? My entire family, none of my family, none of my family or the rest of her family is interested in taking this shot. But because she's a weirdo, she don't want to be around us because of the shot. Now, Colleen has emotions about it. And I tell her every day, just forgive your mom, forgive your mom, forgive your mom. But the idea that is that it's better that she's not around anyway. Right? Keep her at a distance. So... At, in some way, shape, or form, you're going to have to keep your mom at a, at a physical distance. You're going to have to get away from her so you don't hear her opinion. You don't see her mood. You don't have any attachment to her. And so I know it sounds like, um, you know, you say that you, you, it's going to be a struggle and you got to move away. And I know you're joking now. You said that it's time to come to Florida. But this is why it says in the Bible, in Genesis uh, God asserts that a man is to leave his parents' house and take a woman. When he says, when a man is supposed to leave his parents' house, it means he, in essence, needs to start his own family, which means leave behind your own. Leaving behind is metaphorical and literal. Leaving behind means I'm a big boy now and I no longer subscribe to the dictates of my mommy. I can hear her, I can love her, but she has no bearing on me. And moving away literally can mean and should mean distance, some sort of distance. You could still live in the same neighborhood, right? But you're not over there every day. These men who, and I know some people are going to knock me for this. These men who are on, their, on the phone with their mommies, grown men who talk on the phone with their moms on a regular basis are confusing to me. I don't, I don't talk to my mom on the phone. Does that make me a bad son? I don't, I don't know, maybe, but I don't have mommy issues. Right? I don't talk to my mom. My wife talks to my mom. So my wife is, as we're reading the Bible, I learned so much more about what it means to be a good wife. A good wife is hospitable. A good wife is a woman that maintains that connection. So my wife maintains that connection. She talks to my mom. My mom talks to her. And it's great because they talk about the family. They talk about cooking. Last night we all had dinner together and my mom and my wife were going at it the whole time about like recipes and stuff. So it's great. 
but I'm not talking to my mom about recipes. I'm not talking to my mom about her life. And she's not talking to me about my life. She's not giving me her opinion. She doesn't have any feelings about what I'm doing. I do remember one time, though, too. I was, I had some wrong thinking about some things. I won't get too specific. But I presented it to my mom in, in, a, in a way that I was kind of bragging. <laughs> it turns out I was wrong, and I know I'm wrong now. And I can see in retrospect. But I was, I was, I was approaching my mom with something that I know is wrong, it was wrong thinking. My mom looked and then looked away and ignored everything I said. She knew it was not her place to share her feelings about it. It was not her place to give her opinion about it. She looked, she looked at me, and she turned away. I took that for what it was. Hmm, okay. Right? But if she started giving me her opinion and she started telling me what to do, and she's and like your mom starts resenting the people in my life, she gotta go. She gotta go. And it doesn't mean, look, even if you, even if your mom is right, like my mom was in this instant, you still have to be big boy enough to stand on your own two feet and to know that I'm gonna make this decision whether mommy likes it or not, even if it's a wrong decision. Sometimes I say it's better to make a wrong decision than no decision at all, or it's better to make a wrong decision that's your decision than to follow somebody else's uh, advice. Not always, but a lot of times. A lot of times it's just better because it's about growth. It's about autonomy. It's about being a big boy. And that's really what needs to happen here, dude. So um, I put the ball in your court. It's not about her. It's about you. And you need to dribble that ball off that court and go play somewhere else, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.